So if you're trying to factor this thing, it's really helpful to have a good graph. And so we put it in a Desmos. I changed around the scaling so it looked like this. But I can see that I get roots at negative 4, at 2, at 7, and that's it. So four roots. Let's log that in. Now, x equal negative 4 corresponds to what is a binomial? William? x plus 4. And then keep going. x. Mm -hmm. Good. So those are all our binomials. Now let's look at the behavior of the function at these roots. So coming back to our graph, what kind of behavior, bounce, wiggle, or straight through, do we have at negative 4? A bounce. Mm -hmm. And then, good. Um, yeah, it's, they're, they're both straight through. They don't, they don't kind of wiggle through. That, that would mean they kind of, you know, skim the x-axis near the root for a little bit. But neither of them do. Now, what multiplicity do you associate with each of these, with a bounce? And that gives me degree 4, which is nice because it matches that. So I can rewrite this now as p of x is x plus 4 to the power 2, and then x minus 2 to the first power, which I'm just going to ignore, or not write. I'm not going to write first power for each of those, but there you go. So knowing the correspondence between roots and and factors and then understanding a little bit about the, the bounce and wiggle stuff, man, you get your factorization really fast. In the old days, you'd have to go, okay, well, I got a root at negative 4, and then do the synthetic division, you get a 0 here, and then this would be a cubic polynomial, and then you got to do the root at negative 4 again, and then you'll get a quadratic polynomial, and at that point, maybe you can factor it. I don't know. So let's take kind of a quick look here. That'd be 1, negative 1, negative 42, negative 32, and 224. So add going down is 1, negative 4, gives me negative 5, that gives me a positive 20, and negative 22, and then positive 88, and that's going to give me uh, 56. And then a negative 224 gives me 0. So, great. Now I know that negative 4 is a root twice. So, I'll do negative 4 again. And that's going to give me 1, negative 4, negative 9, positive 36, positive 14, negative 56, and 0. So, I got the x plus 4 out twice. So what I've gotten so far is p of x is x plus 4 times x plus 4, or x plus 4 squared, times x squared minus 9x plus 14. And at this point, you can use a quadratic formula, or hopefully better yet, just factor it. x plus 4 times x minus 2 times x minus 7 and that'll still be squared. So you can get it this way. It's just longer. Nothing wrong with it. Um, I prefer, you know, re-engineering it based on the graph. I think that's faster, but this works just as well. I would. I mean, if that stuff's allowed on a test, then, you know, why not? I mean, I, I think you saw that this is a lot faster than all this stuff. Okay? Just be careful that if you have something that has fractions, say, you know, if you have x equals 1 half or x equals negative 3 halves, 
that when you turn these into binomials, you actually get rid of the fraction part. So this would be 2x equals 1 or 2x minus 1 equals 0. And the same way, this would turn into 3x plus 2 equals 0. So you want to use the binomials that don't have fractions. Because if they do have fractions, it probably won't line up with what you're trying to finish, uh, trying to uh, factor. Uh, because the leading terms would end up being like an x to the third or x to the fourth as opposed to a 6x to the fourth. So you need to get rid of those fractions when you're going backwards from root to binomial. Okay? Cool. All right. Good luck with this.